Another day, another story. Given that plants do not have pain receptors, nerves, or a brain, they do not feel pain as we members of the animal kingdom understand it. Uprooting a carrot or trimming a hedge is not a form of botanical torture, and you can bite into that apple without worry. However, it seems that many plants can perceive and communicate physical stimuli and damage in ways that are more sophisticated than previously thought. Welcome to Tabo Eminent Channel. Some plants have obvious sensory abilities, such as the Venus flytrap and its incredible traps that can close in about half a second. Similarly, the sensitive plant rapidly collapses its leaves in response to touch, an adaptation that might serve to startle away potential herbivores. While these plants visibly display a clear sensory capacity, recent research has shown that other plants are able to perceive and respond to mechanical stimuli at a cellular level. Arabidopsis, a mustard plant commonly used in scientific studies, sends out electrical signals from leaf to leaf when it is being eaten by caterpillars or aphids, signals to ramp up its chemical defenses against herbivora. While this remarkable response is initiated by physical damage, the electrical warning signal is not equivalent to a pain signal, and we should not anthropomorphize an injured plant as a plant in pain. Plants have exceptional abilities to respond to sunlight, gravity, wind, and even tiny insect bites, but, thankfully, their evolutionary successes and failures have not been shaped by suffering, just simple life and death. The question of whether plants feel pain is a subject of debate among scientists. Unlike animals, plants lack a nervous system and a brain, which are typically associated with the ability to experience pain. Pain, as experienced by animals, is a complex phenomenon involving the processing of stimuli in the nervous system. Plants do respond to various environmental stimuli, such as light, touch, and damage, through a series of biochemical and physiological reactions. These responses are often adaptive and can help the plant defend itself or optimize its growth. For example, when a plant is damaged, it may release chemicals to signal neighboring plants or produce substances that deter herbivores. While plants do not experience pain in the same way animals with nervous systems do, some argue that they exhibit a form of sensitivity to their environment. However, this sensitivity is not considered analogous to the subjective experience of pain in animals. The debate over whether plants can be said to feel, or, experience, anything akin to pain is still ongoing, and it involves philosophical as well as scientific considerations. Scientists who study plant biology often use terms like, signal perception, or, stress response, rather than attributing feelings or consciousness to plants. Plants have evolved intricate mechanisms to detect and respond to changes in their environment, but these responses are generally seen as adaptive processes rather than conscious experiences. For example, when a plant is subjected to physical damage, it can release chemical signals such as jasmonic acid. These signals can trigger various defensive responses, like the production of toxins or the attraction of predators to deter herbivores. This type of response is crucial for the survival of the plant but doesn't necessarily imply a conscious experience of pain. In recent years, some researchers have explored the possibility of plant communication and cooperation. Studies suggest that plants can release volatile organic compounds when under attack, signaling nearby plants to activate their own defense mechanisms. While these interactions demonstrate a sophisticated level of communication, they are still fundamentally different from the nervous system-based communication found in animals. The debate over plant consciousness and the ability to feel pain raises interesting questions about the nature of consciousness and sentience. It also underscores the importance of using precise language when discussing these topics, as terms like feel and pain can carry anthropomorphic connotations that may not be applicable to plants in the same way they are to animals. As our understanding of plant biology continues to advance, researchers may uncover more about the fascinating ways in which plants interact with their environment. Let's delve further into the complexities of plant responses and the ongoing exploration of plant behavior. Scientists have discovered that plants can exhibit intricate behaviors that go beyond simple responses to environmental stimuli. One fascinating area of research involves the phenomenon of plant intelligence. Plants, lacking a central nervous system, use a network of chemical and electrical signals to communicate within their own tissues and with other plants. 
The study of plant neurobiology has revealed that plants can integrate information from their surroundings and make adaptive decisions based on this input. While these processes are not equivalent to the consciousness and subjective experience found in animals, they showcase the remarkable ways in which plants interact with their environment. In addition to their ability to respond to physical damage and environmental changes, plants display phenomena such as tropisms. Tropisms are growth responses to environmental stimuli, such as the way a plant bends towards light, phototropism, or responds to gravity, gravitropism. These responses involve the coordination of cellular processes, suggesting a level of complexity that goes beyond simple reflexes. The exploration of plant behavior also intersects with ecological studies. Some researchers propose that understanding the intricate ways in which plants communicate and respond to their environment can have implications for agriculture, forestry, and ecosystem management. By deciphering the language of plants, scientists may develop new strategies to optimize crop growth, enhance plant resilience, and address environmental challenges. While the question of whether plants feel pain remains nuanced and may not have a straightforward answer, ongoing research continues to shed light on the rich and sophisticated world of plant biology. As our understanding deepens, we may gain even more insights into the unique ways in which plants interact with the world around them. In recent years, scientists have uncovered fascinating aspects of plant signaling that challenge traditional notions about plant capabilities. Mycorrhizal networks are underground fungal networks that form symbiotic relationships with plant roots. These networks connect plants and allow them to exchange information, such as warnings about herbivore attacks. While these findings open up new avenues for understanding plant communication, it's essential to interpret these behaviors within the context of plant biology. The absence of a nervous system or a brain in plants challenges traditional definitions of consciousness and sentience. Researchers continue to grapple with the philosophical implications of these discoveries and refine our understanding of what it means for a living organism to sense and respond to its environment. As the field of plant biology evolves, the story of plant communication and behavior unfolds, offering new perspectives on the interconnectedness and complexity of the natural world. But pain, specifically, is a defense mechanism. If something hurts humans, we react instinctually to it, fight or flight, as do other animals. But plants don't have that ability, nor do they have nervous systems or brains, so they may have no biological need to feel pain. Whether it can be proved that plants experience pain or not, going vegan is your best bet. Vegan foods require the deaths of fewer plants and zero animals. As mentioned earlier, the existence of phantom limb pain means that it is possible for someone to experience pain without having nociceptors at the site of the pain. But it's not possible to experience phantom limb pain without a brain and a nervous system, and the phenomenon of phantom limb pain suggests that pain is ultimately constructed in the brain. Thanks for watching request you to subscribe the channel.